Hey guys, I'm Jason. I work for Flowcorp and we're a company that specializes in flow, level, and display. Today I'm excited to take you through our Digilink remote monitoring software. This will be on release 3.0 and there are some new and exciting features in this software including email alerts which helps with process monitoring. This video is an excellent standalone video to get familiar with Digilink software. It's also the second video in a three-part series explaining our level demo kit. So let's jump in. So as we get started today, you might be wondering, well, what is Digilink software and can I use it anyways? Digilink software is specifically engineered to monitor and configure the Flowcorp manufactured display line. The Flowcorp manufactured display line encompasses three devices, the Digicom 2000, the Digitouch, and the XMOD Relay Expansion Module. The Digicom 2000 is a universal process display that comes standard in a field mount enclosure. The Digitouch is an advanced universal process display. It comes standard in a panel mount enclosure. And the final device in this lineup is the XMOD Relay Expansion Module. This is an awesome device and it adds quite a bit of horsepower to our displays. It connects through RS-485 cable, which means it can be mounted even up to thousands of feet away from the display itself. It also has four 10 amp relays in it. This is excellent for controlling pumps, pump alternation, triggering alarms, controlling valves, or really anything you needed to control with a relay. Digilink offers two ways to get connected to your Flowcorp manufactured displays. The first method is through RS-485 cable and you'd hook into the COM ports in the back of your computer. The second option is connecting to a local area network and you do this using Ethernet cords or you could call them computer cables. What we need to do is either connect to an existing local area network or we can create our own local area network. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to take a router that we have here and we're going to create our own local area network. So this router will broadcast a wireless signal. We'll connect to that with our computer and then we'll hook our Digicom 2000 into this router using this Ethernet cord and then we'll apply power to the router. And I'll also get our Digitouch hooked up to this router for the purposes of this demo. I now have our Digicom 2000 and our Digitouch hooked up to the local area network we've created with this router. Additionally, I have my computer connected to the Wi-Fi that this router is broadcasting. I could have also hooked my computer up using an Ethernet cord, but in this case I've chosen to connect through Wi-Fi. It's also helpful to understand that I'm inside the office here and my work computer regularly connects to our office Wi-Fi. I've intentionally disconnected from that network and connected to the Wi-Fi that this router is broadcasting. That way I'm on the same network as the displays I'm trying to monitor. Okay, once we're connected to the same network, I need to launch Digilink. In order to do this, I go to the Start menu, All Programs, Flowline Options, and click on Digilink. And what I get is a window that looks just like this. Digilink is auto-discover software, so it goes out and it scans my local area network for any Flowcorp manufactured displays, and then they appear in this list. In this case, Digilink went out and found a Digitouch and our Digicom 2000, and they appear in this list, and we know that they are monitoring correctly because we have a green light next to them. Now that we're taking a closer look at my computer screen, we can see that Digilink opened up to the Display tab. We can also see a list of devices down here in the middle, and we can see that communication is happening properly by the green status lights. The first device is selected, and we can tell that by the blue bar across the device. The first device is the Digicom 2000, and we know that by looking at the picture up here at the top of the screen. The second device we can click on and then we know it's the Digitouch by the picture up here at the top of the screen. Now to more easily tell these two devices apart, we can rename them. So I'm going to click on device 1, and then I'm going to double click on it, and I know that our Digicom 2000, let's say for instance, is tank 3. 
So in this very first field here, Digilink device name, I'm going to type tank3. The next field here is Digilink refresh interval. Currently, Digilink is set to refresh every three seconds. I could slow that down to once per week, but we're going to leave it at three seconds. This next section we'll cover a little bit later in this video. I'm going to hit Save Settings to save my new name, and this brings me back out to the list. I'm going to double click on Device 2, and I'm going to rename our Digitouch to Influent Flow 4. I'm going to leave the refresh interval the same and hit Save Settings. Now you notice we didn't return to the Display tab, we returned to the Configure tab. That's because we made a configuration change. I'm going to switch back over to the Display tab, which we're familiar with. I'm going to click on the Digicom 2000, and we can see that both devices have been renamed and are accurately displaying up here. Now that we've reviewed the Display tab, let's move over to the Data Log tab. At the top, we see a chart where our data will be logged. We have some filtering options. We can scale our chart. And then we have a list of devices at the bottom here. We're currently looking at the data for Tank 3. To view the data for another device, simply click on it. I'm going to click back on Tank 3 so we can look at the data for this device. Now, it doesn't really look like we're charting anything, but that's because our chart has a different scale than our device. The Tracer 1000 is scaled for 0 to 18 inches. And our Tracer 1000 is connected to our Digicom 2000, which is what we're monitoring here with Tank 3. I'm going to change our scale to be from 0 to 18. And then we see our charted data up here. Now we have a very interesting trend because this is a demo for tank level. It looks like our tank is very low and then has some very high, very quick spikes. Now this is because I'm just putting my finger on the probe to simulate tank level. And in fact, if we watch our value down here, I'll go ahead and put my fingers on the probe, and the value jumps way up, and then when I let go, it'll return to the near empty level as the tracer is just laying on the table here. That's what we're simulating here. But more or less, you can see how it would data log over time. And in a real tank, we'd see probably a more gradual progression. If we want to filter this data, we just check the box next to one of these fields. And I can set a date range from and to a certain date, or even just select a time during a day where it's from, let's say, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. I want to see what my tank level was. The final option on the Data Log tab that I want to discuss is Export. If I click on Export, I get the option to export the data as a CSV file. A CSV file can be opened in Microsoft Excel or another spreadsheet program, and there I can further analyze the data. The next tab we're going to take a look at is the Configure tab. So let's move over a couple tabs to Configure and click on that. And we're going to touch on several of the options on this screen, starting with Log and Alarm. When we open the Log and Alarm settings, we see Data Log Configuration. And the current logging interval is set for every 30 seconds. So that's why when I put my fingers on the probe, we didn't instantly see that log in the chart. But rather, if I had held my finger there for 30 seconds, we would have seen it on the chart. Now, 30 seconds is a default, but I can change that to be more frequent or less frequent, depending on what your preference is. 30 seconds is fine for what we're doing, so I'm going to leave it there. We can choose when to delete the logs. So if they're older than one month, three months, six months, or a year, we could have them delete then, or the default is to never delete a log. The next area in the log and alarm settings window is for alarm configuration. This is where we can set up a new alarm. So I'm going to click here. Our first option is to trigger when the alarm is above, below, increases by, or decreases by, and then I can put in a value. Since our Tracer 1000 is scaled for 0 to 18 inches, I'm going to put in 10, and that'll be a nice point to test our alarm. The next option 
is when we want the alarm to notify us. Now the device can go into alarm mode and Digilink will only notify us in a certain range if we use this option. So we can only be notified, let's say, from 12 a.m. to 1.30 a.m. So the device goes into alarm, let's say, at 10 p.m., but we won't actually get notified until 12 a.m. based on this setting. I'm going to uncheck this for the purposes of this demo. The next option is how often we get notified when the device is in alarm. We can get notified every three seconds all the way through once a week. I'm going to leave the interval on 10 minutes. Alarms notify us in two ways. First, we can turn on a pop-up window. Within Digilink, a window will pop up and notify us that we went into alarm. Secondly, we can send an email. We can choose the subject and the recipients of that email in these fields. I'm going to make the subject tank is full and I'm going to send it to myself. To be able to send emails from Digilink, I need to set up the email server in Digilink. I do that by clicking this link. This brings up the email configuration window. These would be my outgoing email settings and they would be provided to me by my email host. I'm going to put in some example settings. For the SMTP address, I'm going to put mail.company.com. I'm going to leave the port number the same. For user, I'm going to put in user, password, 1234. And I'm going to put from address, this would be my email address, user at company.com. I'm not going to make that secure, but again, this is whatever your email host would provide to you. And I'm going to click Save. Of course, when I click Save, the validation fails because this is not a real email address. But I'm going to say, yes, please save these settings anyways. We now have an alarm set up in Digilink. So as the level rises on the Tracer probe above 10 inches, it's going to trigger an alarm. This alarm will initiate a pop-up window, as we see here, and additionally, an email will be sent out. The content on Digilink remote monitoring software turned out a bit longer than we expected. I'm going to take this opportunity to break the video in half here, and I'll join you over in the next part.